So again, we'll be just working on this file, right? We like to actually copy edit in um, web layout view. The reason why I'll show you now is because if you go to review, turn on track changes, and I come in and say this, say this should be OCN, right? I have the change here in bubbles. It's not actually in the middle of the, uh, the text, right? So that was review, track changes, and I made a change and it highlighted for me. And let's say, we'll just introduce an error or something here, right? Or something like that. So you'll see I have my changes here in these little bubbles. They're out of the way. I can actually read this. Oftentimes when you turn track changes um, on, you'll see that revisions are in line like this. Um, this is not good for uh, copy editing because as you're reading through, your mind is just gonna get so jumbled with this. Um, so in order to turn on those little bubbles, all you have to do is go to show markup, balloons, show revisions in balloons. And then that'll pop them out over here. And no matter what change you make, you'll be able to see what you're inserting here. And if you've removed anything, it'll float out here so that way you don't have to um, sort of see that while you're editing so that's um, one of the things that we do with track changes and so we always make sure track changes is on uh, because we want to be able to also in a way tell the author like look we're editing your manuscript but at the end of the day it's your manuscript right and so you have sort of this it's almost a selling point where you're like you have this ability to review these files and look at them and and make sure that our edits are uh, keeping you know your ideas right because if you send if you've edited a manuscript and you send it back to the author without track changes on now the author has to reread the whole document to make sure that like you haven't added something crazy into his file or her file so um so we have track changes on here i'll show you how to lock the file just so that so that we can keep that in mind if here in the same review tab this last button here that says restrict editing you can click on that and it'll come up with this little pane over there on the right hand side on pc on mac it should be something similar right and you're looking at number two that says editing restrictions right you click on where it says only allow this type of editing in this document and you can actually set what you allow so you can assign no changes so they can't make any changes not something you want to do um, you can do comments so that can, they can only put in comments or form so they can only fill in forms but they can't do anything else what you want is tracked changes when you have tracked changes what that does is that if the author takes this uh, document they make a change they actually can't turn track changes off and so you, when you get the file back you'll be able to see everything that they made so you'll every change that they made. So you'll turn on track changes here, and then yes, start enforcing protection, right? And you can not set a password, but then if an author's savvy enough, they're gonna go in and turn it right back, turn turn the protection off, and you don't want that. So always set a password. It has to be some, that something simple. It doesn't have to be you know something with symbols and letters and all that, just something that the author's not gonna guess at and turn your features um, your protection off. So, you know, I'll put in a password here, right? And we'll tell you what it is just so it's secure, right? And then I'll hit OK. So in this case, right, you'll have the permissions um, sort of locked in. And so any changes, if you notice, track changes is grayed out, but it's still on, right? So any change that the author makes, um, you'll be able to see it and it will actually tag them with whatever the name they've registered their word under so you know author a it'll be author a and it'll, you'll see their change and it'll be a different color uh from like for example scribes changes or even your changes as a project manager um if you're delving into this as well um and so in order to then just stop the protection once you come once you you know receive the file all you have to do is go same place restrict editing go all the way down to the bottom right stop protection you put in your password and the protection is now stopped and you can see that track changes can be turned on and off again. So um, we found that that is often the best way to, as Tim said, manage um, you know, what is actually being done to the manuscript and avoids sort of a back and forth that may cost a lot of time and effort.
and patience. Um, so, um, so yeah, so when we actually copy edit, we always have track changes on, right? And we work in those balloons so that way we're able to see um, those issues. Um, if you look, I believe here, if you look, this is our, our procedure, you'll see front matter bibliography. As I mentioned, you actually start reading the body text around halfway through, right? And then you end by doing a spell check to make sure that you haven't introduced anything as it, you know, we're human and sometimes we have, um, you know, butterfingers, that happens. Um, you know, make sure that all your comments to the, uh, to the author are clear. And this is where a little bit of, I would call it, um, I don't want to say empathy, but um, it's the idea that when you're addressing the author, you're talking to another human being. Because sometimes while you're editing something, you might be frustrated and write a comment in a way that might be very terse. This is the time to actually go through your comments to the author, um, you know, and say, you know, and fix them up, make them like address them in a nice way. So that way the author does not take it as, you know, umbrage or something against themselves, right? Um, and this is something that you, we actually have to keep in mind. Think about the, the idea of the golden rule, right? If we were writing a book and we received stuff from an editor, we'd like, you know, the editor to treat us as, you know, as human beings, not like, why on earth did you write it this way? or whatever it might be. Um, and so here there's, um, there's also a QC process at the end. We're not gonna get into that now. We don't have um, the time for that, but um, there is a co there's a QC process for it. So once a file is you know, done copy edited, it goes to QC with an editor um, who is experienced and they will go through uh, certain checks just like we did with the composition to make sure that nothing is missed. Um, and so that's sort of like a little brief primer on, on editorial. The reason we're not like going too into it, and I know we're running up on, on time, um, is because editorial is a very subjective thing and it's like, you know, each organization works with editorial as they see um, works best. Um, and by the way, as I mentioned way back, um, and I think I believe it was our second meeting, you're not tied to like the Chicago manual style if you need to use APA because that's what the discipline asked for use APA, you know, um, um, you know, American Psychological Association. Um, you know, if you need to use, you know, MLA, then use MLA. Whatever style guide is appropriate for the field that the book is in, that is the style guide that you should use. What we worry about is consistency and making sure that it's consistent throughout the entire book. Um, and I believe we can pretty much end on that note, um, but I want to leave room for questions, although I know we're, some of you must go and we're, we're running out of time. We're one minute over, one minute over.